You're at 109 right now. But you don't hear me though. It says local recordings. You you with me? Local recordings and so on so. All right. So can you hear this? You're at 109 right now. Yeah, I hear it. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so um Marcel. Marcel the loser is uh with us today. This is the uh IC109 podcast. You're at 109 right now. And uh I I got to say man, Marcel and I had a uh a podcast a, a while ago and um it was about a, about a, has it been a month now? Yeah, a month of some change. Yeah, time sure is flying and shoot. Oh my gosh. Um and Marcel posted some um, videos and I was like thoroughly impressed with his work. And I'm like, yo, I got to get this guy to sit down and, you know, bring some more of that energy back. And we got to create some things together. So that's what has inspired um, this recording of the IC109 podcast. You're at 109 right now. Marcel, how you doing? I'm doing great, Larry. How you doing? I'm doing all right, man. Well, you know, I don't want to take a lot of your time. I already have trying to set up the the shots and all that. That's for the backstory. But the thing about it, man, is I had some interesting uh, occurrences uh, this week, and I, I want to share them uh, with you because you know my story of ten nine has a lot to do with coincidences. And you know, the last time we did this, there was a bit of a coincidence uh, that occurred. You know, because my numbers are ten and nine, and and who would have thought? Who would have thunk that? You were wearing a shirt with the number nine on it, so you know. Hey. Yeah, nine is nine is one of my favorite numbers. It's uh, Michael Jordan's Olympic number. Man, there is a video with uh, even KRS One and a brother was breaking down, schooling him on the number nine. He had a whole poem written and all this uh, type of stuff, and um, I've seen it. My cousin sent it to me. Uh, I recommend that you check it out as well. You know, for this that nine sort of uh, energy. You know, if you haven't checked it out already, I haven't. Yeah. Okay. But, bro, you know, it's a uh, it's been an interesting week for me, and this is the story that I want to tell you, Marcel. This is why I have you here, man. So we've heard about the attacks in uh, Lebanon that are, you know, on the the news, on the front page, and everything. Well, here's my story about Lebanon. And the coincidences that occurred this week in relation to it. You ready for this one? I am ready. <laughs> so Sunday, you know, I I was uh, having a Spanish lesson, and I was talking to this my Spanish teacher online, and uh, at some point, Shakira came to the, uh, you know, became the topic of discussion. As usual. Yeah, exactly. And I, you know, not only did I go to this uh, thought of how tall Shakira is, but so did my, you know, Spanish teacher. She said, you know, oh, she's short. I was like, yeah, exactly. She's short. She's short. And I went to Google to figure out how short she is. And in the process of Googling how her height, which I think is somewhere between 5'2 and 4'11", which is pretty short, um, but she's, you know, she still packs a punch, you know, with the hips moving and, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I found out that she's from Colombia, but also Lebanon. Mm. I learned this on Sunday. So, and I thought that was pretty interesting, but also interesting because, uh, actress Salma Hayek is, uh, Mexican and Lebanese. So there's the Lebanese um, connection. So when I heard about Shakira, I thought, wait a minute, but so is uh, Salma Hayek. And I thought, oh, that's pretty interesting. So I was already on Sunday thinking about Lebanon just because of the coincidences. Mm -hmm. Marcel, I go to school, go into the classroom. I'm a substitute teacher at a local high school. I go into the classroom and then there's another uh, administrator who comes in, who enters the classroom to support one of the students. And she's wearing a Muslim hijab and she's got a sweatshirt on with 
the bold letter that reads uh, wording that reads across like it would if it were Nike's advert advertising um, Nike or some some name brand. It says Lebanon. Mm -hmm. And so. Now, when something is that apparent, I don't always, you know, uh, acknowledge it, you know, make comments. Or, and in this case, I didn't. I didn't say to her, hey, um, you know, I didn't say assalamu alaikum, you know which I would have expected her to say, wa, wa alaikum salam. And then I would have followed up with uh, kaif halik. And then she would have said, alhamdulillah. And these are all things I picked up when I was in the Middle East. Mm. But if I'm not Muslim, I don't want to, you know, get into, I don't want to, I don't want to get myself caught up. The same way that if I would, if I were just to say konnichiwa to Jap someone Japanese and say something, you know, wati wa watashi wa America jin de desu, and then they respond with something, and I'm like, I, I can't speak. I can't say any more than that. You know, I'm we're done. The conversation's over. <laughs> you didn't you didn't send, you know. So I didn't I didn't want to engage, you know, in that sense. But there was Lebanon across her shirt. Mm -hmm. Some some minutes later into the um the class, there was a lull. And I had a moment where I was able to ask her, I said, excuse me, are you Lebanese? I mean, why else would you be wearing a, a shirt with that, that country's name emblazoned across, you know, the chest, right? So she's like, yeah, she is. Uh, she said, I am Lebanese, but I'm also half Colombian. Mm. Marcel, that's the same mixture. I don't know, is that admixture? Is, is, that, is that the term? I don't know. That's the same genetic mixture of... Uh, Shakira. Yeah, the hips. Exactly. And it's like, wait a minute. So, and I told her, I said, oh, like Shakira. And she's like, like who? And I'm like, Shakira. And I said, I just learned that yesterday. And she's like, wow, what a coincidence. You just learned that yesterday. And here we are talking about, you know, Colombian, my heritage, Colombian uh, Lebanese. And she was like, I didn't even know. That Shakira was Colombian Lebanese until you told me. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Now, that was Monday, Marcel. Tuesday comes, completely different day. I've got, I'm I'm none the wiser about, you know, what things are going to happen and, and what have you. And then going about my day, as, as I'm sure you were, we get the news of Lebanon being attacked. Mm-hmm. Of all things, pagers. Do you remember pagers? I recall. I mean, man, I when I got when I read that headline, I was like, what? A pager? Am I reading this correctly? Because you know, pagers, that's you know, antiquated. That's some old uh technology. But anyway, yeah, they actually uh weaponized pagers out there in um in Lebanon. And that just struck, stuck with me. It was like, wait a minute, but I was just learning about, I was just thinking about Lebanon on Sunday. And then it, I had that moment where it was like, wow, this is a, what a coincidence on Tuesday. And here mm -hmm. we are on Wednesday with an attack. And then Marcel, Thursday, Wednesday, right? Or was that Tuesday? No, Wednesday. It was Tuesday. It was Monday, Tuesday. When, it was Wednesday. It was Wednesday's attack. Wednesday's attack was a walkie-talkie attack. So the young lady's uh, shirt that I saw on Monday foretold the events of Tuesday and Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Now I had nothing to do with any of this stuff. I'm not. No, 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 no. This is that's that's not what it's about. But what I'm saying, <laughs> what I'm saying, Marcel, <clears throat> is my book, which is available on uh, uh, IC ten nine dot store. Well, it tells of similar events that happened to me when I was in the desert, whereby I saw things, um, and then weeks later, they all added up to something that they all added up to one conclusion. And I was like, hmm, that's wild. Now, in order to get the, the, the gist of what I'm 
you know, I'm being vague, intentionally vague, but it's all there in the book at IC109. Uh, and uh, of course, this is the IC109 podcast. You're at 109 right now. So that's all, man. I just wanted to share my madness with you, man. This is the, you know, the, the, the story of 109 has to do with coincidences. And this week, I certainly experienced another coincidence. And so I had to share it with you. Mm. Well, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's interesting, you know, we got this, you know, Shakira, uh, Snapple facts, and then you've got, you know, this vintage terrorism with walkie talkies and pagers. It's, uh. It's a chaotic world, and yeah, it's uh, it's it's funny how things can just you know come together. Yeah, have you ever seen the movie um, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button? You know, I I've never watched it. I sat through. Isn't quite long. It's almost three hours. I mean, yeah, I guess if you look at the time, yeah, it's it's that long. Um, so Crash Course. It's a movie about uh Brad Pitt uh being like growing basically kind of aging backwards like he's an old baby and then he's a young old man right so anyways there's this part in the movie where they talk about coincidences oh. and just how it's funny just how the universe lines up and they took they took up think about maybe three or four different people and then laid out all of their days and everything they had to do and the things that stopped them from doing it at a certain time and they were running behind or they were running early and all these things eventually crossed paths that led to one of the main characters in the um, movie having this like uh, gruesome injury, right? Mm. That led to, it just led to her being in a certain spot at a certain moment that, you know, wrecked her life. And it's all because everything happened the way it did in each of these people's lives to affect the other person's life. Gotcha. And, um, and it seems like something that's, yeah, straight out of a movie, but it's the crazy thing is, is that, you know, from a human perspective, it looks crazy because we can only see, you know, out of our own eyes. But when you look at the broad picture, it's like the, those kinds of things happen every day. And it just looks like you got caught in the orbit of one. And it's, uh, it can be an exciting and sometimes, you know, terrifying uh, thing to experience. I love how you put that, brother. I love it, man. That's uh, Benjamin Buttons. You chose a perfect movie to describe um, and to relate, you know, my situation because I haven't, I didn't watch it fully. I've watched bits and pieces of it. Uh, and uh, um, there are some other movies like Magnolia um and uh what's the other one the number 23 oh and then most recently shawshank redemption no 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 no. excuse me excuse, excuse me a recent no 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 no. not um yeah these are some old old movies here but the what is it it was tim no what the what's the guy okay it was morgan freeman and the other guy in shawshank redemption tim robbins tim robbins okay so tim robbins was in uh the Hudsucker Proxy. Okay. The Hudsucker Proxy is this movie um, about this guy, um, you know, catapulting to success in on Wall Street. The most unlikely uh, character, right? Uh, some bad situations befall uh, the CEO. They need to find um, what a gullible, a lucky idiot to run the company. And they choose some some schmuck, and they put him in the and he put him in the position, and he starts running the company. That's a fabulous movie because it has something. It's unexpected because it it, it takes place in New York and it takes place on Wall Street, but then there's some Indian Hindu connection because everything is related to the circle, the hula hoop. So, man. Everything is connected. Everything is uh, is is interesting. We live in an interesting world and universe. And I'm glad that you that you you saw that, recognize it, and you helped me, you know, um, with that. So with that said, man, again, want to thank you 
for uh doing for running through this uh this this process uh with me we're gonna um close this uh, episode of the ic 109 podcast you guys check out marcel the loser on uh youtube right yes let us know it's marcel the loser on youtube um forever you know for however long that lasts uh i've become um <laughs> tough days as a part-time content creator they are tough days as a part-time content creator and uh some days uh you get to the the end of them and you start you know just thinking like is this uh if it all stops now um am i happy am i complete with uh the work i've done and uh it's like you look at the pie chart of the work and there's a big part of it that are youtube videos and not enough of the things you actually care about so i'm doing some soul searching right now but um before I, you know, jump off that cliff, yeah, Marcel the Loser on YouTube. <laughs> and you can always catch me, of course, on my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash D-Y-M-M-C-U. There it is, people. Peace and blessings from the IC10.9 podcast with Marcel the Loser. All right, y'all. We out. You're at 109 right now. Cheerio, oh boy. Here I am in London and England having a wonderful, splendid time. Like near, nearby their 40s, like this is much more practical than eating a shitload of fried fish and chips in the middle of the day and trying to do stuff. Right now. But you don't hear me though.